Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can save player data in between play sessions. So, for example, if a player joins, does some things, and then leaves, using the data store service in Roblox Studio. So in order to demonstrate, I'm going to make a script in server script service. And the first thing we're going to do is define the data store service. So local data store service equals game and get service data store service. So the main function of using the data store service is get data store. And so when you're using data stores, you can store whatever you want, whether it be like coins or money or any currency or even tools or some like achievements, I don't know, a player inventory. You can do whatever you want. So let's just do a generic data store because I'm not going to show you how to set up your in-game currency or whatever. I'm just going to show you how to save it. So let's do local, I don't know, coin store, which should be data store service get data store and then we can define whatever data store we want so even if you haven't created a data store before you don't have to use like you don't have to make it specifically you can just use get data store so it'll either get the one that's already there or it'll make a new one like depending on whatever you want so this function takes two parameters first one is the data store you want to get so let's just say coin data and the second one is the scope. And so when you define a scope in your data store, it's basically like defining a new data store within your original one. And the reason you'd use something like a scope in a data store is for when, for example, if I if this is not a coin data store, let's just say it's player data. And I could define a scope, which would be inventory. Or I could define a scope, which would be tools or something. So the reason you would use this instead of just making multiple data stores is if you wanted to save on performance because a lot of times Roblox will not let you like request a lot of data stores at once. It doesn't like it because you're using their data stores. It's not yours. So you always want to keep your information to as little data stores as possible. So we're just going to, for exa this example, we're not going to go into any scopes. We are just going to go into the coin data data store. So there are two key functions in our data stores, set async and get async. So both of them do what you might think. Set async sets a value in our data store and get async gets a value in our data store. And data stores in Roblox are organized like a dictionary. If you don't know what a dictionary is, I have a tutorial all about tables, arrays, and dictionaries, which I will link right now. So each item in a data store you has a key and a value. And so usually your, your key, you don't want it to be something like, like key equals whatever player, and then you want to do like the user ID. And the value would just be whatever value. In this case, it would be coins. And that's how you would get it and set it. So you'd set a certain key to a certain value and you'd get a key and you get that value. So in order to use our data store, we have to publish our game. So right now I have my game window up in the bottom left. You can access that by going to view and then game explorer. And there's this nice green button that says publish. So I'm going to click that. And we're just going to name this IT data stores. You can do this whatever you want, but make sure bef you can only use da the data store service after you publish your game. So here we go. Let's just create this. And so we published our game. So now we should be able to access our data store. So first thing we want to do is do coin store set async and we're going to set it to let's just say random player key and our value let's just say 10 coins and you can print our coin store 
get a sync random player. So what this will do is it'll set the key of our random, we're going to set the key to random player and the value of that key to 10, and we're going to get the key random player. So in theory, this should print 10. So let's try it out. So if you try running this now, it will say cannot write to data store from studio if API access is not enabled. So you actually have to enable this API access on the Roblox. So here we are on the Roblox website. And so find your game and go to the little cog in the corner and press configure game. And so it'll take a little while to load. And in the basic settings, you should see, you should see a little checkbox that says enable studio access to API services. And you want to check this because this will allow you to access the data store service in your game. So I'm going to click save. Make sure it saves, and now I'm going to go back. So here we are back in Roblox Studio. And so now what we can do is, let me just give me a few more spaces. We're going to set the coin store, set async. And this function takes in two parameters. The first one's the key that we want to set it to. As I said before, it is a dictionary, so it has a key and a value key value pairs. Let's just say this key is random player and the value we want our random player to have is 50 coins or whatever whatever thing you're doing. You can also save strings, booleans, even tables if you want to do that. So whatever you want. So now we're going to get async. We're actually going to do local random data equals coins I can't spell or capitalize today. Get async. And get async takes in one value, which is the index, or the key, I should say, that you are willing to get. And it returns the value. So this should return 50. So random data should equal 50. And in order to check that, we're going to print our random data. So let's run that. You can see it takes a little while, but it does print 50. So that works great. So yeah, that is a basic understanding of data stores in Roblox Studio. Along with set async, there are many other functions to change your key or your values, I should say, such as update async or increment async. I will have a link to the documentation in the description if you want to explore those. But for now, this is a basic understanding of what you should do with data stores. But there's one more thing you should know, and that is whenever using data stores, you should always pcall your f whatever you're doing with them. So what pcall does is it basically just wraps a function and makes sure that if it errors, it won't like stop your script because data stores are very inconsistent and they error frequently so you don't want your script to be stopped if that happens and you might be saying oh how will i define my variable like random data or something if it's in a pcall so let me just show you if i pcall this it says random data unknown global what you can do to bypass this is if i get rid of the local that fixes it, but what you want to do in order to save on performance is do lo local random data, e don't set it to anything, and then set it equal to something down here. So this will allow your data stores to be both safe and functional. And in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how you can use data stores actually in your game with a like real life example, so to speak. So I hope you enjoyed I hope, I hope you learned something from this basic data store tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please comment them down below. I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.